So I've got to admit, it's been a while since I've visited any fish shops. And I went into one yesterday as I was driving past, I just happened to see it, and I thought I'd pop in and see what the score was. And I've got to say, it's really made me pretty disappointed. Not in the shop, the shop was fine, the staff were great, the animals inside were healthy and perfect. But it's made me a little bit upset with the hobby in general because it led me down a little rabbit hole on Instagram and, and YouTube and stuff. And it's not something I normally do. I don't tend to look at fish keeping outside of my own sort of hobby group, you know, friendship group. I don't tend to go on Instagram that much or YouTube and look at other people and what they're doing. But I did yesterday and what I've seen is actually quite sad. Um, it might just be the, the sort of subsection that I got hooked into, but it all tends to be completely sterile tanks. And by sterile, I just mean no real biodiversity. When you look at them, they look pretty nice, though, right? They're full of these bright, vibrant, popping colours, lots of corals, really expensive fish. But when you look a bit closer, the rocks are like bright white. They look like bone. The sand is pure white as well. I mean, healthy sand is normally like a greyish colour because of the life that's within it. And these tanks just don't have anything. And I was wondering to myself whether or not this shop is trying to emulate that because all of its display tanks were very similar. But they looked so wrong. I don't know what it is. There's something about the current trend of these pure tanks that just looks so wrong to me. And you might be wondering why I'm even bothering to tell you this. Well, what sparked it off is the fact that I was in another shop today, my local shop, which I visit regularly, and there was a really nice person in there struggling with their aquarium. And I spoke to the person, and it turns out it's basically a newish tank, but it's been set up with no live rock, because in the UK, you can't get live rock. And her previous tank, which was set up using the good old Fiji live rock, had no issues whatsoever. So I think the issue in a lot of people's problems these days is the fact they don't have very much biodiversity in their tanks. Partly because in the UK at least, you can't get hold of biodiverse rocks. So you have to start off with this dry eco rock, basically, just man-made stuff which has none of the goodness in it which you would need to start a healthy reef system and the other reason is because people are chasing the Instagram dream and I think the other reason is people are chasing the Instagram dream where there's just literally nothing in your tank other than really bright corals bleach bone white sand and rock and of course your fish which have to cost like £1,500 each, otherwise there's no point even showing them. That's not bitterness, it's just what I've noticed. But it's really kind of misleading for the general hobbyist because your rocks need to be kind of dirty, and by dirty I don't mean covered in filth, just simply alive. Biodiversity is what actually creates life within the tank. It's all of the stuff that lives on the rock, the coralline, the amphipods, even in some cases little snails, asterina, brittle starfish, all of that stuff is things that you need. And it leads me back to this lady's problem. Essentially, these days most tanks are set up to be sterile because that's the dream, isn't it? Nobody wants pests and pests are so widespread in the underwater ecosystem, freshwater, marine tanks, whatever, there's always pests. And we define a pest as something which we basically just don't want in our tank. And unfortunately, lots of these pests are actually things we need in our tanks. I think one of the big problems is actually the message to a lot of fish keepers these days is to try and reduce everything in your tank that isn't a coral or a fish, even down to snails. I mean, these guys here, if we can see, if we can focus, dove snails. Now, if you Google dove snails, a lot of the time, you'll be told that these are a pest and these should be eradicated because they reach numbers unproportional to your tank and they just get everywhere and destroy everything, including skimmers, etc, etc. 
but they're actually one of the most beneficial snails you could ever have in your tank. Yes, they breed, but they do a really, really good job. And that's just one of the organisms which, for some reason, people are trying to eradicate from their aquariums. The reef system is basically like a rainforest. And you can't have a rainforest without pests. You can't have a rainforest without all of the creepy crawlies, the bugs, the things that might look unsightly, that might upset you that you're in your tank. Bristle worms, for instance. People go to the ends of the earth to try and remove bristle worms from their system. And yes, I don't like bristle worms. And also, yes, if you wrap your fingers around one, it does hurt and it is annoying. But they do such a brilliant job of keeping detritus down. That's why they're there. They exist for that purpose. And the minute you try and manage this kind of stuff, you're going to upset the balance in your aquarium. You're going to even, maybe not even get your tank to mature. And that's what this person was having in this shop today. Just couldn't get over the ugly stage in their tank. Couldn't get over the hair algae stage. Now that's probably ironic looking at this tank, but long-term viewers will know what's going on in here. But if we look closely in this other tank, we can see there's so much life amongst this macroalgae. Now macroalgae obviously is something I specialize in, I am passionate about, but you could replace macroalgae with live rock, with your corals, with anything like that. And you'll see how healthy this tank is. If I removed the little critters from here somehow, maybe added a predator, then this would get covered quite quickly in nuisance algae. The sponges probably wouldn't do very well, and the sponges are doing a great job because they're filter feeders, they remove rubbish from the water as well. So the image we're trying to pick up here is biodiversity in your reef tank is what makes it work. It's not something that you should fight against just for maybe aesthetic looks because they're only temporary, those aesthetic looks. Those white sands, those white rocks, they need to go different colour. They need to get algae and other things growing on them to actually support the life in your tank. So really the message is embrace the critters, embrace the pests. I mean, some things don't embrace Aptasia, absolutely not. Do not allow Aptasia in your system at all costs. But other than that, most things are supposed to be in your tank. Brittle starfish, Asterina really. I mean, they do some good jobs. There are some species which you have to work out for yourself if they're damaging your corals or not. But on the most part, I found Asterina to actually be beneficial. Bristle worms, beneficial. Some flatworms are even beneficial. So don't just, you know, go in there, try and remove everything from your tank to get that Instagram look because at the end of the day, you're not going to have a healthy reef system. You're going to be constantly struggling against um, what nature intended, basically. And that's not a right way of doing things. You need to let nature do what it should be doing. And that is creating an ecosystem, a thing that supports itself as much as possible.